Okay. So now comes the intimate part of the day. Uh, now you'll see, but the first presentation that we're going to have is a, is a video because uh, unfortunately David Amsalem, who had to uh, do his presentation now, is sick. So he sent us a little video. And then we will have the presentation of uh, Julio Biles, which is totally uh, uh, graphical, so it's, going, it's better with this kind of light. Okay? So let me introduce you David Amsalem. David Amsalem is the co-founder of Florida Invest, an innovative and disruptive real estate investment firm, allowing more than 3,000 investors worldwide to invest in a secure, profitable, and easy way into cash-flowing assets. His mission is to change the way people invest in real estate in a globalized world. There are coins whose price are dependent to the volatile cryptocurrency market. And there are stable coins whose value is pegged to a real life asset or fiat currency, such as the dollar or euro. David is going to share how real estate can be a real world alternative to stable coins. There we have the short video. Less than a month ago, large crypto holders were mostly relying on stablecoin to control volatility and avoid taxable events that could happen on the crypto if converted to fiat. After the UST collapse and billions of dollars of losses for investors, there is a high chance that things will never be the same. Hello everyone, I'm David Amsalem, co-founder of Florida Invest and FI Capital, and my team and I strongly believe that real estate has the ability to become one of the most effective ways to store and secure large amounts of cryptocurrency and become an amazing alternative to stablecoins. To give you a little background, since 2016, we've been removing all frictions to allow non-US investors to diversify their assets and enjoy the incredible growth, steady cash flow and tax benefits of commercial real estate in Florida. From the $100 plus million that we've raised, we've identified a few key components that every investor needs to look at for good diversification. Risk balancing, decorrelation from traditional markets, and tax avoidance or tax benefits. And that's exactly what people are expecting from stablecoins. As one of the most innovative regions in the world in terms of use cases for crypto and helping the sector grow, Florida is giving us a great overview on what the future can hold for crypto investors and crypto companies. South Florida in particular has become an open sky lab for the crypto economy. Its ecosystem has welcomed the biggest blockchain companies in the world. Some of their municipal employees are even paid in Bitcoin. The city of Miami itself has launched its own cryptocurrency, the Miami coin. South Florida is today the capital of NFTs and artists come from all over the world at the Art Fair Art Basel every year. From a real estate standpoint, its ecosystem has grown so much that crypto transactions happen every week and a tokenized real estate has become the most used type of crowdfunding. Some tenants even pay their rent in crypto. Unfortunately, a huge tax barrier still remain on large amounts. Crypto transactions for the most part are today triggering taxable events and that's slowing investors down a lot. Not only they can be expensive for crypto holders, they also slow people down in their capacity of action because of the lack of visibility and the tax treatment that's not clear in several countries. The ecosystem is evolving in a few ways and there's one innovation that might solve that issue that I wanted to present to you today. That innovation is crypto-backed real estate mortgages. They work exactly like traditional real estate mortgages, except that the cash collateral or the down payment can be placed in crypto. As some of you probably know, the cash that comes out of a loan is not taxable and the crypto that is placed as a down payment or cash collateral remains untouched, not taxable either. That way, the investor owns the property directly, eliminating all the governance issues that can come with tokenized real estate and that not really adapted to large crypto holders. This new form of mortgage basically allow any large crypto holders to store their cryptos in a safe, non-volatile, cash-flowing vehicle that not only avoid taxable events, but on top of it, adds rental income and depreciation. 
a totally new kind of self-owned stablecoin backed by real estate, handpicked by the investors that produce rental income and depreciation. According to the World Economic Forum, by 2025, 10% of the world GDP will be stored in the blockchain, meaning a growing need for stable solutions to store this wealth. A few months ago, a good friend of mine told me that if we aim to raise capital in crypto for real estate, our biggest competition would be stablecoins, not real estate companies. At first, I thought it was off. Actually, he was totally right. And we, as real estate professionals, will definitely have a role to play in providing stability and security to the crypto economy after what happened last month to stablecoins and the impact it had on their level of trust. There is definitely a few ways the ecosystem will grow and this will improve either through regulation and technical disruption. But we believe that real estate, in one way or another, has everything it takes to become a serious, real-world alternative to stablecoins. Real estate might be the way to save the world stable in crypto. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, uh, last but not least, Julio Weiss. Julio. Where are you? Let me introduce you, uh, Julio, Jacobus Universe NFT creator. His story is about the digitalization of a light lifetime work. Julio's father, who has been painting for the, his, for the last six decades, had a collection of 350 plus paintings. They digitalized all the drawings and chose 200 of them to create the Jacobus Universe collection. Julio is going to present from Salvador Dali to the metaverse, how traditionally crafted and creates value in the NFT ecosystem. Welcome, Julio. <laughs> Why not? OK, uh, this is working, right? Yeah, this is working. OK, um, okay um, my presentation is going to be kind of different, OK, only based on images, so I hope you enjoy it. It's kind of I mean, it has another, another, another style. Okay, so, okay, perfecto. From Salvador to the metaverse. Okay, so first I'd like to, to start my presentation sharing with you a paradox, okay? But uh, not any paradox, but a Greek paradox told by the philosopher Plutarch about the, the Theseus boat. Sí. Ah, okay. Sí, sí, I can, I can. Ah, okay, thank you. Uh, no problem. Okay, so uh, the Theseus paradox, as I was saying. So uh, Theseus, when he arrived with his boat to, to Athens, um, some parts of the boat had to be replaced because they were damaged after the travels that he, he did from Crete. And so these pieces of the boat, these parts of the boat were, were replaced. So they gives this gave to the philosophers a scenario of the identity of things that grow. Okay, there was two sides of philosophers, two points of view, because some argue that even though the pieces of the boat were being replaced, the boat stayed the same as the original one, and others argue that with the, these pieces being changed, the boat was different. Okay, so this gave to the philosophers two, two questions that gives us the paradox. And the questions were, first, if you change one by one all, the, all of the pieces of the boat, is it the same boat? Is it the original boat? And then the second question is, what if you start all the pieces and then you build again with the with the damaged pieces you build another boat which of them is the original one okay this paradox help us to understand how crafted art can be converted can be digitalized into an nft but at the end some would argue that the nft might be the arena and then the crafted piece of art might be the arena but it's just a quick question for you guys to a quick uh, paradox to to make you think okay so now Perfecto. I want you guys to think, you don't need to raise your hand, but at least think to yourself uh, to answer this question. Is this a digital piece of art or a crafter piece of art? Okay. It's a crafter piece of art made by Salvador Dalí. The painting is, what is it called? Just give me a sec. I want to. The Persistence of Memory, I think, from 1931, okay, by the Spanish painter Salvador Dalí from Catalonia. Okay, what about this one? Is this a piece of digital art or crafted traditional art? 
crafter again. This one belongs to uh, Joan Miró. Uh, this painting, the, the name of this painting is Harleskin's Carnival, and it was uh, drawn in 1925. Okay, but what about this one? Is this a piece of crafted art or a piece of digital art created in a computer? Well, we'll be very surprised if you would know this piece of art because it belongs to our to, to our collection, to Jacobus Universe collection. This was actually drawn by my my by the artist of the collection, my father. And again, it's a piece of crafted art. But at some point, it's kind of difficult to differentiate if you don't know the artist what belongs to the, uh, the to the virtual world and what belongs to the physical world. And after looking at several pictures, I I, I started trying to answer uh, one of the big biggest questions of human history: What is art? I think it's kind of difficult to, to, to answer that question. But what I did is I went to the official sources, so I went to the Oxford Dictionary to, see, to look up for the definition. Okay? And the Oxford, di Oxford Dictionary says that art is the use of um, imagination to express ideas or feelings, particularly in painting, drawing, or sculpture. That's the definition that the Oxford, si Oxford Dictionary gives us. And I think it's kind of short. Okay? I'm going to say it's weak. Incomplete, short, because I think that art can include other realities. So what I did is I went to the Spanish dictionary. La Real Academia Española uh, gives us a new definition of art, and it says, "Art is the manifestation of human activity through which the reality is interpreted, or the imagination is shaped with plastic, linguistic, or sound resources." Okay, this is you know. Uh, probably more complete definition of art. But I was surprised that none of these uh, two definitions included the two elements that probably, I think, from my point of view, would define art in the 21st century, okay? 100 years from now, people will define art, I think this is a personal opinion, but will define art as sources of value and entertainment. Anything that provides value and entertainment could be considered at some point art. And if we think deeply on it, Probably the biggest or the m biggest event in the last 30 years of, of human history, which is the internet, actually again is another source of value and entertainment. And this is why I believe that both realities uh, go together so well. Technology is another thing. Technology is more complex and it has been with us, I mean, all our history. But I think that both internet and art could be considered as sources of value and, uh, and entertainment. Okay, so we're going to take a look at several different pieces of art. And I want you to think about uh, as, uh, them as values, uh, as sources of value and entertainment. Okay? Um, okay? These two paintings by René Magritte, the French artist. Uh, the on the left, you see uh, La Grande Guerre, the Great War. And then on the other side, you see, you see The Son of Man. This actually could be the inspiration for some of the. Uh, NFT collections that all of us know, you know, the CryptoPunks, that uh, they change the face or they change the background. This could be at some point the, the inspiration for those new digital artists. This is uh, called the Guild of the Golden Teeth. That is a, it's a, a piece of art by the artist Jean-Michel Basquiat that actually was sold like in November in, in Christie's by 40 million, 40 million um, dollars could be a source of value and entertainment at the same time. And this could be digitalized, okay? So I'm going to present you, sorry, some several images so you can think if those can be digitalized or not. And then if you digitalize that, you can create value behind it. Could you digitalize this statue and put it in the metaverse? Of course, you could. Could you digitalize this, <laughs> this ceiling? Well, you could, and it has been already done in the year, 2000, uh, in the year 2017. A project that lasted 75 nights, recorded, I mean, took 270,000 pictures of the whole uh, room uh, for rest uh, restorative purposes, but they already digitalized the Sixteen Chapel. And I'm pretty sure that at least somebody involved in that project has thought about selling as NFTs those paintings, I'm pretty sure. The church, who knows? Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, what about this statue that is in Paris? This could be digitalized and sold and create value, and entertain. What about this guy? 
can this, can this frame be digitalized? Can the director of this movie sell as an NFT just this frame, the original one? What about this thing from La La Land? Don't you think somebody could be could want to be the unique owner of this thing, and then at some point digitalize this piece of crafted art that is movies, the cinema? What about this guy? I mean, who would want to be at some point the owner of the only and unique frame from the wall of Wall Street? But what about the job, the work of these guys? All the music produced by these guys, all the albums, the album cover, the songs. Do you think that the unique NFT of, I don't know, uh, Hey Jude could value a lot of money, could create value and entertain at the same time? Same with this person, with Elvis, the king, all his songs. And what if we go from techno music to digital music? Again, you can create an NFT out of a song, okay? Maybe some people will argue, yeah, but you can listen to that song other places. Cool, but you are not the unique owner of that piece of crafter art. I don't know if you recognize this couple, but maybe you could uh, digitalize El Quijote. Maybe you can digitalize chapters. Maybe the Real Academia Española uh, would like to you know, make some profit or at least create some value out of this, this book. The Middle Earth, you know, the stories behind Tolkien's book. Or maybe the comics by Stanley, the Avengers. Okay, so as I presented to you several, I mean, different versions of art or crafter art, we can conclude that, you know, uh, the definition of art is kind of complex, abstract, but that doesn't mean that we cannot give some figures, some numbers uh, about this. Here comes the boring part of the presentation, sorry guys, but you know, this is about numbers, so we have to have to share with you some, some numbers. Uh, let me check the right numbers that are here. Okay, so based on the annual report by the Foundation Art Basel and the UBS Bank, uh, in the year 2020, even though it was the pandemic year, the art industry moved uh, 50 billion dollars, US dollars, okay? That was, I think it was 22% less than in 2019. But not only that, that in that year, in the 2020, even though with the pandemic, online art sales reached an all-time high record of 12 and a half billion dollars. And one third, and one third of those sales came through Instagram, one third. Okay? Again, this is like traditional art, crafted art, that is there. Um, if we take into account more, mm, I mean, um, like uh, earlier, not earlier, but like uh, recent, recent figures, in the year 2020, uh, sorry, in the year 2021, the auction house Sotheby's made a huge record of $7.3 billion in sales, in art sales. And then the other auction house Christie's made 7.1 billion, a record in the last five years. So as we can see, the crafted art industry, if we could define it somehow, it has a potential, a huge value. And this at some point connects with the NFT reality because uh, as, I mean, here it says, according to Technavio, the, the, the website, um, the NFT ecosystem is gonna have a value of $150 billion by the year 2026, okay? And I gave you the figures of just the art, the artistic, the, the paintings, the sculpture, okay, uh, industries. I didn't take into account the movies, I didn't take into account uh, other things like music, but these, I mean, these figures, that these amazing figures go together. And if the digital art ecosystem doesn't take into account all the crafted art that is out there, we're gonna miss a huge part, a huge part of the value and the entertainment, okay? But then we see other projects such as the one we see here, okay? The Bored Apes. This includes several things, and just to, to let you know, I think the last time I checked, the highest uh, sale of the Bored Apes were at 3.4 million, and the 10 most, the 10 biggest sales combined of the Bored Apes uh, amounted for 14 million dollars. So it's again, value created behind these collections. Or the Crypto Kitties. You know these guys. Again, another 10,000 collection. Or these guys. 
I think that here says that um, according to nftvaluations.com, the CryptoPunk valuation has a value of three billion US dollars. Okay, this is kind of, I mean, it's not, don't take it too seriously because it depends on the crypto on, the, on, the, on Ethereum. But at some point, the last time I checked this, which was a week ago, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't in February, it was a week ago, but at least it was valued at, at $3 billion, the whole collection, okay? But then we face one issue, that is the, am the, the amount of content created is too much. And some people just think that because something can be digitalized, it can provide value, it can give value. And to be honest, I don't think that's true. Actually, OpenSea, the biggest platform NFT, uh, the biggest NFT platform uh, on the world, last January, uh, it made a huge change that allowed that uh, yeah allowed creators only to have five collections per profile, and in each of those five collections to upload only 50 items. I remember m myself <laughs> the day that I was not able to upload uh, the next the next uh, uh, drawing in our collection, and I got you know some kind of panic like hey. Right now we are uh, just uploaded 115. I don't remember the, the, the exact number, but I'm supposed to upload 200. What is going on? Thank God, uh, OpenSea changed that that policy and they allowed creators to 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 complete their their collections. But they the the, the platform itself was realizing that too much content was created. Okay, and this helps me to explain quickly one reality that ha that are originally affected the NFTs, and that I think at some point we have forgot about this forgotten about it, is scarcity. We all remember that the value that NFTs had was the scarcity of them. The fact that cannot be divided, the, 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 the NFT gave to the collection, the scarcity. But what happens if everyone creates a 10,000 collection of items through an algorithm that lasts, like in two days, you have 10,000 items. I mean, with all due respect for those collections, but then the, 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 the idea of scarcity disappears. But with art, with drafted art, you can maintain that, that scarcity uh, reality behind. I, I was talking with, with Samuel before and other guys that, I mean, uh, I don't know, for instance, John Miro, Salvador Dali, they are not going to create a new painting. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not going to do it. Uh, the, the value of scarcity is, I mean, in, in, in its nature. Like, crafter art, it's limited. It's real scarce. So, um, again, this helps me to, to explain that crafted art has a lot of room, has a lot of uh, margin in this, in this new, reality, new, new reality. But we have to realize that we live in a complex world, okay? So, according to, let me check again. Yeah, according to the report by the international insurance company, Hiscox, specialized in the world of art, last August, less than a year ago, was the, the, the NFT ecosystem established the record of sales with uh, its peak with $1.5 billion so, uh, sold in transactions in one month. The thing is that the next month, September, that number dropped by 70%, okay, in just one month. So that kind of volatility is not helping people around the ecosystem, content creators, uh, to, to, to define the next, the next uh, events in this, in this ecosystem. But again, we have to at some point, land on specific uh, actions, specific jobs that we that can give us some 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 future, and that obviously explains how also digital art can have a, a, a beautiful future. I think all of us here know this this painting. I'm gonna take the risk not to name it and not to repeat again the the, the sales figure that all of us here know. But here's another piece of crafted art that is. Let me check the names. So, so many names. Sorry, I didn't remember all of them. But this um, collection of uh, sculptures, uh, inspired by action statues, is called "Through Constant Decay" and was created by the artist Jan Sutton. Okay, it's so another way of creating digital art based on traditional crafter art. But then you have, for instance, Casa Batjo. Okay, this project, the digitalization of the Casa Batjo, which is right here like a few meters away, uh, was done by the uh, Turkish-American artist Refik and Nadol, okay? And it's called Living Architecture, Casa Batyo, okay? This was a kind of printed or reproduced on top of the building last 7th of May, less than a month ago, here in Barcelona. 
And then the 14th of May, again, like just a few days ago, that piece of art was sold in Sotheby's by $1.4 million, okay? And that's based on architecture, which is crafter art. But not only architecture, also cities. What if we imagine the cities of the metaverse? And what we create, we're based on that kind of crafted art, we, are, we create some digital art. Actually, this project um, is, uh, belongs to the Turkish, again, Turkish artist, Balkan Karisman, and it was part of the MMMMAD festival. There was a, a, a festival that took place in Madrid uh, some weeks ago, and he presented this piece of art that he tries to represent how cities in the metaverse will, will look like, again, inspired in craft art. But then we have other sources of entertainment that, as, as again, can be digitalized. Uh, this, uh, our friend uh, Justin, uh, had a concert or, or launched a, court, a concert last November in the, um, in the platform called, in the visual music platform called Wave. Okay, so it was uh, another way to digitalize crafted art. Okay, if you, if you, if you, have, if you give a concert in the, in the metaverse, you are digitalizing a crafted piece of art. Okay, then this is a new inspiration. All of us remember the movie Ready Player One from year 2018, directed by Steven Spielberg. To be honest, to be completely honest with you guys, <laughs> I remember the last time I was saying it, I was like, yeah, sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not gonna happen. I mean, not until, you know, 100 years from now. Yeah, I was completely wrong. <laughs> I was completely wrong because this future is, is coming. I mean, there's one day, uh, one day less until we, use these glasses, and if here anybody wants to bet, in less than 10 years, remember these words, in less than 10 years, we'll not use any more mobile phones. Mobile phones will disappear. We'll only, lo we'll only use glasses. Why? Because it doesn't make sense to have two screens, the one in your glasses and then the one in your phone. So in less than 10 years, phones are going to disappear. These are going to be the screens that we're going to have. I mean, it's just a personal opinion, okay? <laughs> we'll see what happens. But, uh, but I think, yeah, why not? Let's bet. Okay. Or Disney. I mean, pretty sure that Disney will go into, into the metaverse digitalizing this kind of uh, crafted art. What if we see Snow White in the metaverse in 360, you know? And then there are some experiences, some, some, sorry, some experiments such as this one by Bad Bunny. He, instead of recording a music video for his last album, Un Verano Sin Ti, A Summer Without You. Instead of recording a music video, he recorded a, a music scenario. So you don't listen the song while you are watching the, 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 the video. What you do is you listen to the song while you are there with Bad Bunny and his friends. And you can look at them, but you can move all around what you want. Okay, you can look at, be looking at the sea while you're listening to the music. You can be looking at the, you know, the palmeras, other part of the beach. And, and this is the beginning. Instead of recording music videos, you record music scenarios. And maybe, who knows, if in the future, instead of recording movies, will be part of a scenarios. Okay, uh, Steven Spielberg won't record a complete movie. They will record an scenario. The last, I don't know, 10 minutes, and you are in that scenario for the 10 minutes, 360 degrees. Okay, so um, this is like too big, too complex, and this is us. What's in the whole picture? Kind of lost. Like it's too big, and we don't know where to look at. So what do we do? Well, wh wh what do we have to realize? First, that crafted art will always be there. Okay, the human can will always have this need to express the, the, their feelings, their values, their ideas, to share with people, to create content through music, through painting, through sculpture, through dancing through acting, through speaking, you know? If it's, again, remember, if it creates value and entertainment, it can be considered art. So craft there is always going to be there. And again, it gives scarcity. Then you can, at some point, try to start digitalizing these pieces of work, OK? Here you see uh, El Infante Baltasar Carlos, OK? The, the son of Philip IV, King of Spain, drawn by Velázquez. And then you see the other version drawn by Jacobus, my father, in a more modern, surrealistic way. Okay. But you know that if you want to digitalize some piece of art, I mean, you need a specific means. 
it's not that easy as taking a picture of your phone. I mean, I'm sorry for Samsung, but their cameras are not that good. They're really good, but they're not that good. You need a proper set, okay? The proper lights, the proper you know atmosphere to digitalize how it should be done, these pieces of crafted art. In order to create works like this, okay? Uh, this, this painting is from, where, it, where is it? Yeah, it's from the year 2015. It's called Boat Crossing, and it was an original drawing by my dad, done with pencils and pens, like the materials you find in any school. Then he drew this seven years ago, and then what we did is we digitalized it uh, through the right process to get the digital version of this piece of art. And we did it too with other paintings. And actually, we got some point we could, you know, start once the image is digitalized, combining different realities, okay, and modifying the original crafted piece of art. And that can happen with the sculpture too. Some might say this is like a, a piece of digital art created in a company. This has a very NFT look, to be honest. But it's a piece of a sculpture done by my dad several years ago. Several years ago. And actually, it's his best friend. <laughs> my dad this, did this for his best friend. But we have to face uh, any kind of risk, because this is a huge world, and this is a, a, a scary world. This is the artist of the collection, Jacobus, my father, facing death, being fearless of what can happen, and knowing that if you want to create a legacy that lasts more than you, you have to explore different uh, alternatives, such as digitalizing that pieces of cra di sorry, sorry, digitalizing those pieces of crafted art. I didn't tell you about this, but one thing that my the, the artist artist my dad doesn't want to do is give away or sell the original, the crafted pieces of art. He doesn't want to give them away. He wants to keep all the drawings at home. But if you did digitalize them, you can create a lasting legacy all around the world because you give access to every single person in the world. And then, again, you can keep creating content, okay? Keep creating content, different versions of it. So, to sum up, I think, guys, we have, we have been talking through the whole day about this whole, you know, blockchain, reality, cryptos, NFTs, and it's kind of big, but one thing I realize is we are not that good at communicating it. I don't know who was, I think at the very beginning, somebody said that uh, this reality is abstract because it's difficult to explain. I completely disagree with that. Something is not abstract because it's difficult to explain. And we have to, from my point of view, make big efforts trying to explain to people that are not in this room, people that don't belong to this ecosystem, the huge potential of this new reality. Because if we, do not, if we don't do that, we're going to feel completely alone. The room is going to be empty. And what we actually want is to be all together creating the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just one last thing. I think it's, I wanted to include this. I mean, these are just links, but these are the links where I got the images from. And I think it's important in this world to recognize the job done by somebody or the pictures done by somebody. This is the, the most on the <laughs> honest uh, way to, 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 to provide the, the authorship of the picture. So I just wanted to, to share this slide. Thank you. Thank you, Julio. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we were expecting uh, Claudia Giraldo, but unfortunately she had to cancel our presentation. Uh, she uh, apologized for not being here. So we would like to know if you have some questions. Uh, yeah, maybe Julio, you can get on stage because you're the only one present of the three people. So maybe the questions are going to be focused on you. Only about my presentation, not the video <laughs> yeah. or anything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Julio, really like that. It's really interesting you say about your dad, because my girlfriend's dad is an art director. He's been an artist all his life. He's 81 years old. And obviously, I've been in the NFT crypto space now for a couple of years, and he's got his views on it. What's his view on the whole NFT crypto space now, vis-a-vis uh, -vis art and how it sort of translates? Well, first of all, my dad is 74 years old. Yeah. I've been the last... 10 months trying to explain to him what actual NFT is. And I think he, he understands it. Mm. I mean, well, he understands it for sure, but he's not capable of explaining it. Yeah. So his view is that this is interesting. 
I mean, when you see these big numbers, these millions of dollars paid by an NFT, I mean, that's something that is really convincing. convincing. And, and he, he enjoys it. Take into account that I'm not, I'm not moving his job from out of home. He's, staying, he's keeping all these paintings. Yeah. So what he thinks is interesting, for sure worth it to try. I mean, I sp I in, the whole, in this whole project, I spent like 10, thousand euros. I mean, I, I went crazy on it. Okay, so my dad is fine with that. Uh, but he sees that, as I mentioned before, it is much easier to create a legacy through NFTs than in the physical world. Because I don't know, I, I was talking with someone of you before that the alternative is way worse. What is the alternative to create a legacy? Bring all your, all your drawings to a gallery, spend a lot of money framing them to invite your friends and knowing that you don't want to sell them? Okay, once you've done that and you spend 6,000 euros, for instance, after those 6,000 euros, then what? Repeat it again with who? So if you want to create a legacy with crafter art, it's way easier to do it uh, through NFTs than through, through, through alternative, traditional alternatives. Hello, um, thank you for sharing your experience. Um, I understood that art is value plus entertainment. And what's your experience through that? What's your use case? How did you do that with your father? How did you create value? Did you sell NFT piece yeah. of art? Yeah. Okay, so the collection, our collection, uh, will have 200 pieces, okay? The total amount of drawings that my father has done in the last six decades is uh, as 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 was mentioned before, he, I think it's right now it's like more than 350. Okay, so we chose 200 of them. That doesn't mean we chose the best ones or the ones we thought could be, you know, like the the the, the most uh, wanted for by everyone. We chose a representation of them and we uh, gave uh, we included it in the collection. So far, we have sold uh, we we have posted 163 and we have sold 13 of them. It's not a big amount, but first of two things. First, this kind of art is not the one that is not very common in OpenSea. I mean, well, the truth is not going to be solved. The, 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 the original one, the one that my father did, my, my father doesn't want to give it away. Like, th and, and just to make it clear, it doesn't have any kind of connection. Once you buy the NFT, that doesn't give you any kind of right for the original one. Because one thing is a GP, uh, JPG, uh, JPG <laughs> file, and one thing is a piece of paper. But uh, trying to, 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 to answer the, your question, what I've done is, again, we have sold 13, no, 30, 13. And knowing that is, this kind of art is not very common, so it's not very popular right now, we believe in, in, the, in the potential, in the future. I mean, we have been publishing them for only six months. I mean, six months is nothing. And then, uh, the on the other hand, the price that we give to this collection, to these drawings, the average will be a, a 500 euros. Why? Because at some point you have to give value to what my father did. The, the fact, I mean, you can give value by establishing the a, a, a higher price. This is not an algorithm that you press enter and just produces and produces and produces different, I don't know, toys, whatever you want to say. This is a piece of art that took a lot of time for my dad, so, but, you know, my dad is not Salvador Dali, you, know, you cannot place a, you cannot put a price of 20,000 euros, for instance. So these two reasons, first, it's, ver not, it's very uncommon, and then the price, compared to other things in, on OpenSea, is higher. Por favor. No. Um, you also mentioned that on OpenSea, the art is a bit different, so like, I think it's almost like tailors to a younger audience, almost. Do you think in the future art will kind of evolve to a way that um, changes completely? So, you know, you see all these monkeys, the goblins, and all this this kind of stuff, to the point where people are going to see that more as art than this crafted art that has been for <laughs> decades and centuries in, in our lives, you know? And also I wanted to ask what your thoughts about AI-generated art. Vale. Yeah. First, first question. To be fair, to be fair, the biggest source of value is the market. Is the market value something? It has value. That's it. 
you can create by now a PDF, put it on, on OpenSea, and if somebody pays a million dollars for it, you create value. So that's the first source. So about new ten, uh, trends, new artists creating content, well, again, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I think it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to get some perspective in a world in which you get, as I mentioned before, in August, 1.5 billion US dollars, and then in the next month, that figure drops by 70%. So when we see a lot of events happening, we don't take them the enough amount of time to really analyze things. And it's kind of hard for everyone to, when you see things happening so fast, to take some space and time, okay, first. So I think we'll have to see. Definitely, it's, it's easier through these uh, platforms to create something and try to see if it has value. But on the other side, what could happen is that what I mentioned before, OpenSea can realize that people are just, you know, launching algorithms, running algorithms to create, yeah, content. But I, I, I personally know several collections that people, you know, we created, I don't know, chairs, for instance. And after posting 2,000 items and not selling anything, we just, I mean, we, 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 left it, we left it there. Why? Because if it only took you two days to create 10,000 files, you really don't care that much. What's the value behind two days? My father has been drawn for the last 50 years. And one thing that I like to mention is that um, there are a lot of artists out there that didn't find the right platform. And I think uh, the NFT reality ecosystem can help them to, to spread their, their legacy. And I don't know if with my answer I answered the, the question about AI, because AI actually is this artificial intelligence through an algorithm creating the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. Okay, I think there's a limit. Um, that's a pretty good question. I, right here, you, there was I, I presented several uh, slides, but probably the most boring one was the most interesting because, um, and I explained the world. So sorry, guys, but this is slide <laughs> that probably you see like okay, so you're talking about painting and then you put a Excel logo. Okay, what I did, what I tried to explain with this slide or is that anything can be utilized from an Excel file, and you can sell that. You can, you can create a piece of art with Excel. I remember, maybe I'm a, this is a personal, but I remember myself when I was 10 years old, using Excel and painting the squares, and trying to create a painting by just painting square by square. Okay, if you take more time, and you are more creative than I was, <laughs> maybe you create a piece of art with, with Excel. But um, art, Anything can be digitalized, but that doesn't mean that anything digitalizable will make sense. And I give you, uh, I'm going to give you the best example. The first time I saw the, the, the Bad Bunny video clip, the ones the guys are at the beach, I was thinking, okay, this, this looks interesting, but you cannot record a movie for the metaverse. Why not? Because when you are, when we, all of us will be in the metaverse, we'll have 360 reality. Not only, I mean, right or left, but up and down, or diagonal. Okay, so when you're, when you're watching a movie, the, di the director wants you to see a unique scene. They, they're directing you to that thing. If Steven Spielberg is recording a movie, Jurassic Park, and then he's <laughs> making a huge effort trying to you know, uh, create this T-Rex dinosaur, and you're looking the, at the tree, <laughs> like it doesn't make sense, you know, and the, all the fights down there, and you're looking at the tree. Oh, pretty nice. No. So I think that, the convenience of the consumption of that piece of art is going to be the limit. You can obviously create a, a, a movie, but it's not going to be that easy. And that's why I mentioned that maybe instead of creating movies, directors will start to create um, scenarios. Have you been in the new scenario by Quentin Tarantino? It's a scenario in the metaverse, but not a complete movie. It's a scenario in which the 360 reality is completed with details. Oh, there's Leonardo DiCaprio over there. Brad Pitt over there, and he's doing that, and then you can go that. It's kind of a video game, and I don't know if you know this, guys, but I did include video games as a piece of crafter art because, I mean, a video game by itself is digital. I mean, it's like, no, 
if somebody <laughs> knows a crafted uh, art piece of a video game, I mean, please let me know, because a video, video game by itself is digital. That's why I included in the in the different crafted pieces of art. Vale? Okay, guys, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now is the moment to conclude our day. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And maybe Karim, you would like to uh, take the mic. Thank you, guys. Um, we hope you, uh, you liked it. <coughs> I just wanted to um, say a few words about the sponsors. Um, Crystal, uh, Crystal Finance. Um, I guess some of you uh, made some money in the blockchain. If you want to make them uh, uh, eligible for tax and make it right <laughs> and legit, you should talk to these guys. Uh, the other thing, um, La Peña is the network of uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, it's based in uh, uh, here in Barcelona, in Lisbon, many other uh, cities. And um, they're offering today uh, a number of um, membership to the uh, people doing the hackathon. And of course, La French Tech, who uh, introduced us to a number of uh, great speakers. Um, I really wanted to uh, conclude by saying that um, it's, um, it was really an event to uh, show you that um, blockchain goes <coughs> way beyond uh, Bitcoin, way beyond cryptocurrency, that uh, we are at the beginning of uh, something new. Uh, we it's more than a revolution this morning I said it's a revolution it's a uh, it's a change it's a um, change of paradigm uh, it's a new sh it's a shift and I, I talked to uh, these two guys this morning and who are super young and uh, I totally agree with them uh, we were saying that um, blockchain is uh, more than a technology so it's a, it's a co-creation it's uh, our world is a uh, coming in a direction where we don't have any more choice now. We have to unite. We have to, we have to use our singularity to create something new, to um, uh, create uh, something that is unique, that we can use all together, co-create, and um, being the, the identity and our own reserve of value. And we all have value. We all have our industry. We all have uh, our ideas. The idea with the blockchain is uh, to create a huge co-creation and ma make the world stop competing together, but just being a world of uh, one and um, and evolve uh, all together. So maybe uh, to conclude, we're moving to a world of uh, people who produce things to a world of uh, creators. So it's just the beginning. Um, let's uh, start this movement. It starts here and uh, go create. Thank you. <laughs> and um, you want to talk about the party? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the rest of the schedule. So now, until 8 p.m., you're free to do whatever you want because uh, we're going to be dealing with the. Uh, the 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 guys the students uh, doing the doing the hackathon and trying to find what project is the best one and then let's meet back at eight o'clock in the restaurant when th we had the lunch uh, at the Solk for the result and then from eight eight thirty p.m. for the party. Uh, I'm going to have to leave you right now. I spent a wonderful day with you all. It was great to exchange with you all. I hope you had a great pleasure spending the day with us. And uh, bravo to everyone. Uh, very nice to see you and happy to see you again next year. Bye-bye.